The Aloha Hour with Johnny and Dewey. All right, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, I'm going to introduce our special guest today. He's the captain of his boat and the captain in the lineup of the North Shore. He's a professional waterman, big wave surfer, a martial artist, an actor, stuntman, producer, and shark advocate. He played in movies like Blue Crush, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, and TV shows like Hawaii Five-O, Magnum P.I., and many others. He is the one and only Kal Alexander. Thank you very much, you guys. Glad to be here. Aloha. Thank you, you, you for coming. You need more jobs. No, <laughs> no I'm, I'm, I'm too busy. I'm too busy right now. You need more jobs. <laughs> we need more visitors, more tourists. Yeah, oh, I yeah, never thought 100%. I would say that, but I mean, it's been nice not to have a lot of tourists, but you know, a lot of people are hurting, a lot of people that work in tourism and that depend on those visitors, you know. So, I mean, 100%. pre COVID. 40 to 50,000 people a day coming in, you know, so yeah. to none. And then now, I don't know, it's maybe like 10,000, maybe. Yeah. 15, we actually maybe. had, um, before you, we had the uh, CEO and founder of Maui Brewing Company right oh, yeah? before you came. And he said the same thing. I mean, you know, it's They're great affected by the restaurants, oh, 100%. right? 100%. It's, right. right. it's devastating. It's devastating. devastating. But uh, let us talk a little bit about you because I know a lot of people, um, you know, want to get to know you. Who is Kala? Who was Kala? Who is Kala now? Um, you know, I got to meet you through a mutual friend, Sarah Wal uh, Zora Walter from Red Bull. She introduced us after you did the Waterman. I think it was right. uh, in New Zealand or something, and that's how we met. And uh, you always down to help, always down to um, volunteer for Exasurf and all the others, and Maliola, and uh, so many others. Uh, just tell us how did you get to that? Your upbringing where you were born. Tell us everything we need to know. I was born here in Wahiwa Hospital in 1969, and we lived right at Sunset Beach. Me and my mom, um, Eddie Rothman lived with us. Um, Tiger Sperry, my uncle. Wow. Yeah, yeah. he lived in the house with us. Um, he had um, a kid with my mom's sister, and so he was like the, before I was born, my dad left. And so I never met him till I was about six or seven years old. Right. And I met him on Maui. Uncle Uncle Eddie Rothman took me to meet him. I was about six, and Eddie was in contact with him and asked him if he wanted to meet me. And um, I don't think he wanted to meet me at first. Um, I don't know if I should say this, but um, they took a... Eddie will probably get pissed off at me later, but they took this some kind of drug called STP. And when they were young, and um, they took what was supposed to be for 40 people, they took one, a, a 40 person dose each. Oh my God. And, and so they got pretty fucked up. And it was my Uncle Tiger, Esperi, it was Eddie Rothman, and it was my dad. And Uncle Eddie and Tiger are very street smart. Um, my dad had a really high intellect. And so I think the drug affected him, and that's just what Eddie told me. It kind of changed him. It, it took away his compassion and a lot of his, you know, people skills, you know, because of his, it, it just reacted rewired, yeah, differently, rewired, yeah, rewired differently your with, yeah, his, yeah, yeah. with his chemistry. Right. And uh, ever since then, he was kind of, kind of, kind of changed. So I never really built a really solid relationship with him. I stayed with him a little bit when I came back to Oahu to go to high school, went to Kamehameha, had an ac academic scholarship to go there. So I had a, we had no money. It was poor. So um, I, I just want to intervene and say that uh, Kala Alexander received a scholarship to attend the private Kamehameha school on Oahu when he was 13 for scoring the top 5% on the statewide tests. Man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. I, got, I guess I inherited some smarts from my mom. My, my mom had a really high IQ as well. And she was a CPA, accountant. My dad was, my dad can build a house from the ground up, design it, do the plumbing, electrical, framing, roofing, whatever. He's just a really smart guy. Um, when I was a year and a half old, my mom took me to Kauai, um, which I'm really, I really appreciate because I got to grow up in a smaller community, um, you know, Smaller than the North Shore community? Oh, way smaller. There's, well, you figure the whole island when I was born, I think, had about 40,000 people. Oh, wow. The entire island. 
Yeah. So Oahu right now has a, a million people. Yeah. And this is the capital. So uh, much smaller. Um, Hanalei, where we moved to, um, we didn't, when we first moved over there, me and my mom, we, we camped. We didn't even have a house. We were homeless. But there was a lot of other people that camped at this place called Taylor Camp. And I, don't, I think they named it after Elizabeth Taylor's, like, somebody from her family or something they called it taylor camp i don't know it's a, a long time ago but it was like a lot of hippies there and that's where me and my mom stayed for a little bit and then we got a house in hanalei and hanalei you wouldn't even see a car like now you you know there's not so much now but before the covid yeah. you would see a lot of tourists but when i was a kid you sometimes i would ride my bike from hanalei valley all the way to hanalei elementary and not even see a car and this is the same elementary where Andy, Bruce went, my brother. Um, and this was in... So you guys got to know each other from school? Uh, Andy and Bruce, no. They're, I'm nine years older than okay. Um So I'm nine years older than Andy. I'm eight years older than Bruce. Um, before they were born, their mother and their father were close friends with my mom, okay. her sister, and uh, my Uncle Tiger. And... Actually, when Danielle was in labor with Andy, I was in the car. We were dri- we drove her to the hospital to give birth with Andy. So, just from day one, you know, wow. I know these kids. Yeah, pretty that's much. That's incredible. From day one. That is day one. No, I mean, that's not, just like. But not really, you know. It's just a small community. Right, right. Like that's this, how it is. And yeah. We, we were the surf. You know, we were the only people on the North Shore. There really wasn't that much people. My so you mom, started to surf on Kauai. Yeah, I saw, started to surf when I was about t- between two and three years old. Right by Hanalei, Hanale, um, the pier, right yeah. therapy. Pretty much everybody who learned how to surf, surf right by that pier. Yeah. Um, but yeah, about two, two, three years old, learn how to surf right there. That's insane. Perfect place. I've been in Hanalei Bay during sunset, and, I, and I'm not very religious, but yeah. I'm telling you, that was a spiritual thing <laughs> to be there in sunset on that pier you're talking about. Yeah, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. Yeah, and 100%, guarantee. Yeah, yeah very, I feel very lucky to have grown up there, you know, just a smaller community. And, just, I don't know, everybody has a identity in a small community. Nobody's, like, anonymous. Every, yeah. So you, everybody's kind of aware of each other. You know, in a smaller community, you can't, you know, if you're an idiot or you act stupid, everybody's going to yeah. know. Yeah. So, right? <laughs> yeah. I feel like when you get in bigger populations, there's, you know, less respect. Everybody's kind of, you know. There's no supervision. Everybody to their own. Yeah. And and in smaller community, I feel like everybody is just yeah you know you, you just you know you're gonna see everybody all the time so you just kind of you 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 I think you act more you know responsible you, you know people are gonna hold yeah. you accountable right? yeah yeah you know, for yeah. how you act yeah you know it's not like a rat race yeah like when you go to like L A like the difference from Kauai to Oahu is kind of like the difference from Oahu to uh, L A yeah you know L A is just Everything's happening so fast. It's so much people and not a whole lot of respect. You know what I mean? They just do whatever they want. Yeah. Hey, fuck you. You know, keep driving. Yeah. yeah. But that's the beauty of community. And I think that's what's missing these days, right? And that's what we need to come back to the community types of feelings because you're right. You know, communities support each other, but there's all a sense of self governance. You've got to be responsible, accountable yeah. because the community is going to call you out on it. Because, you know, whatever you do, Auntie uncle's gonna hear about it, man. You're gonna get busted. You're, you're gonna, gonna get, get whipped. Yeah, yeah, when you get home, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what? It's even harder now because you got um, social media. So everybody's always always here. Yeah. Comparing themselves to everybody else in the world instead of like looking at each other. Yeah. And right. talking to each other and like, you know, I feel like I didn't see too much depression when I was younger. Yeah. You know what I mean? There wasn't. You know, you had this you had the person people around you you had your neighborhood you didn't have the whole world yeah right here right so every day people are looking at everybody else around the world and how you should look how you should act and things that you might want that they have you know so i feel like that's contributing to a lot of the depression 100 percent. a lot of kids yeah 100 percent. you see kids they they uh and then the, it's like here you see all the rappers and the and the movie stars, the guy that the guys that have money, they they talk about Xanax and pills, and and I have family members that have been affected by this shit. This shit is poison. 100%. You know what I mean? People die from this shit, and you know, 
these people, these rappers have so much money, they can get drunk, wasted. They have a driver. They have money. You know, then they, you know, normal people have normal jobs, can't afford to go party and get all fucked up. Don't and, have a and, driver. Yeah, and yeah, and get addicted. Yeah. And yeah. Start getting DUIs. Yeah. Start fucking up, getting arrested. You know, so uh, that's one thing that I see that is is the main difference from when I grew up is just. I always had a job, two jobs, three jobs. I always had a hustle. When I was 23, I got my real estate license. I was selling timeshare. I see a lot of kids these days, man, I don't know. They don't really have that. I see a lot of kids with no ambition. So you were you a know. salesman for, for timeshares. Yeah. Who would have thought? I, I'm, 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 had to hustle. I'm good with people. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I, nobody's going to hand you anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, we grew up with no money, so I had to go go make money. So, but... Yeah, I was I was definitely good at it. Um, Were you a pro surfer back then already? Um, I, I had sponsors already, but I didn't really like leaving Kauai. You know, Kauai is just super. You know, it's like I it's didn't heaven. I didn't want to be a small fish in a big pond. Yeah, I like being a a small fish in a small pond. <laughs> you know what I mean? Over there, <laughs> you, you know what I mean. I don't think I was wink, a big wink. fish. You know, but and and the the thing is, it's like. People over there, what the beauty of a small community is people stay in their lane. Yeah. You know, like for us growing up, never talk back to the uncles, never paddle for their waves. You know, if you see the uncles, you go over there, you acknowledge them, you tell them, hey, good morning, yeah. uncle, how are you? You know what I mean? You, 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 you acknowledge their presence, you go talk to them. A lot of the kids these days, they paddle circles around all the uncles. They don't say what's up to the uncles. You know, the parents are pushing them to go get a contract and get a, be a pro surfer and make money and forget. A, 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 not all the kids, yeah, but yeah. a lot of kids are not. The parents are not teaching them about the old school etiquette. And I don't condone violence in any way. But back when I was young, if you you talk shit or you act up, you might get your head slapped or you might you, you might have to scrap. You know what I mean? And because of that, people kind of was were more thoughtful They didn't say stupid shit, you know. Because they realize they're going to get yeah. uh, hold and accountable yeah, for no, their actions. Yeah, and yeah suddenly exactly. People, and things not, change. That's just how I grew up. Yeah. It's not like people um, misunderstood me, you know what I mean? Like, that's how I grew up. Like, people tell me, fuck you. It's like, you, you know, where I come from, you tell somebody, fuck you, you better be ready for, to fight. Yeah. You, know <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? That's smaller. And that's how it was in Kauai. Yeah. Um, and... A lot, not a, a lot of people. Everybody was, it, it, I don't know. It was to me was 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 better in a lot of ways. Not the the violence, but just that everybody didn't step out of line. Everybody was respectful to their elders. Everybody knew where they they fit in, and you know there was it was it was it was good. It was good. These days it's kind of like a free for all, man. Everybody's yeah. just says whatever they want, does whatever they want, and then a lot of kids are like. Same thing with the rappers and the movies and stuff, Glorif glamorizing yeah. drugs and guns. A lot of the kids carrying guns these days, thinking they're tough and and no, the toughest. And also because they don't carry guns, because they reply on the phone and there's no accountability. Nobody gonna say anything, right? They, they can just say whatever oh, yeah, they want. Yeah. They can say and whatever then, they want. And then they go out to real life and they think they're still behind the keyboard, but uh-uh, mm -mm. you're not behind the keyboard. Yeah. I, Now you gotta... I think back in the day when I was a little bit more understood, I used to get guys talking shit to me on online and messaging me, threatening me, saying all kinds of crazy shit. And, uh, you know, in the past, I would just direct message them my phone number. <laughs> Give me a call. <laughs> G give me a call. We can meet up. If, yeah. You know, no problem. It's, and, it, and it's like Habib said, give me location. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give me location. I, I, I direct message them my number and I, and I, and I, and I, and I don't, and I don't, no threats, no nothing. I, I send them my, because I don't even know these guys. They don't even know me. They're yeah. talking shit about me. And I go, hey, we can talk. Here's my number. Give me a call. Yeah. It, I know you're not from here, but whenever you're in town, just give me a call. We can meet up and I'm going to let you decide if we meet as friends or enemies. That's it. Because I don't know you, you don't know me, you're talking shit about me. Y you we, feel that a lot of people hold your past against you? Um, to a certain extent? When they didn't know the story, yeah. they didn't know what happened, you know what I mean? I yeah, mean, but, but I think you're right. I mean, there's a lot of things that you say are so powerful. There's 
just this moment is like when you lose sense of community you almost lose this invisible kind of way to how to act and behave right because there's a sense of accountability and that's what happened in our society right because if you look back it's kind of you know, gone yeah i know you it's and i so you, crazy, yeah, you, know? you and i are the same age so when you were yeah. growing up yeah Listen, it was cool for the teacher to give you a spanking. It was cool your dad slapped me in the head. Cause, hey, you got to behave all the time. So you, you live within certain rules that you know how to behave, right? And anytime you don't behave, there's consequences. But you're right, right, Johnny? Because these days, you got these things. You can do whatever you say. And we're so easy to have an opinion about everything. And we love looking at car wrecks. And, yeah, you know, we stop and look. And that's what we do. Yeah. And, 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 and that is, again, it's teach us to become more judgmental. Not compassionate and kind. Oh man, and, people and that, are so cold nowadays. And, and that's the problem, wow. right? So, so the issue is now how how do you and I and Johnny and everyone out there who's listening to the show go? How do we get back to that? How do we get back to this sense of love and kindness and compassion and nurturing, and support one another? Really, that's what we need to go to, right? Yeah. So whatever we do, we got to get back to that. I'm curious. Well, before I forget, yeah. too, I just want to add that. Um, everybody has their past held against yeah. them but for me like I, I think what people didn't understand is they just thought I was a barbarian and I was just looking for trouble if you ask anybody that has known me all my life I have been out at Pipeline and I have watched local guys give another surfer shit just because they weren't from where we they were Howley blonde hair from Australia or California and, and I, I'm smart I watch I watch the lineup I watch the kids. Um, I have told these local guys, hey, what the f what the hell are you bothering this kid for? I've been watching this kid. He 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 waits his turn. He doesn't drop in on anybody. He 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 he, he introduces himself to the all the yeah. uncles. The guy's not. He's from Australia. He's from Cal. Who cares where they're from? If they come with respect, that's all we need is respect. Everybody's yeah. got to coexist in this world. And once people found out that, that's pretty much where I was coming from. I mean, I've done some stupid shit. You know, the best thing I did was becoming sober. But for the most part, I, I, I always try to do what's right and to stick up for the underdog or the guys that are getting bullied. Yeah. And just sticking up for our people. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's a lot of people that came from around the world that just came and they, they, they didn't care about the local people. They just came to get waves, to yeah. party, to do whatever they want, speed around the neighborhood, you know, with no thought or respect about the people around them. And I, for one, when I travel, I like to introduce myself to the locals, be respectful. Um, you know, I got to admit, I've been in other countries and, you know, been drunk and act like an idiot. And, and, and you know, I regretted that. But for the most part, I travel around the world. I, I respect the locals wherever I go, and and uh, they should always be respected, and um, you know acknowledged. So, uh, I mean, it, it, I mean, I'm, I'm so like agree with you right now because I look at our country during the last election, right? It's like here we are, right? Yeah, we, of course we'll have all these wonderful political parties, but. There's a point we don't longer respect each other's perspectives and view, and we start then dogging one another. That's and that's what crazy. you're talking about. That's but but, but I, I really think as a country, if everyone does what you suggest, listen, but wherever you go, just put on a hat of respect first. Just do that for one second. Then a conversation would happen next, and we discover more yeah. about something. So we don't much know. bitterness the whole in the thing world. Now. Yes. So much bitterness in yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah, but but really but I think the bitterness comes from. I mean, I hate to say it, but but it comes from home. You know, come from. It's like I was wondering when I listened to your life story. I go, wow, that must be hard as f because your birth father is not around. So did Tiger and Uncle Eddie become more of a male role father for you? You hit it right on the nail. Right, and yeah. you're so thankful you have yeah. that. But as many boys grew up, don't have that. I had a father, but he was never around. You know, so I was looking for a role model, but I didn't find one. But, but again, back to your point, though, if you go through life and think of respect first and everything, right, if we behave like that, I think we have a different society. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, no, I, I, I feel like sometimes I get caught up in the bitterness, too, and I got to take a step back and, like, look at everything that I have that, that I should be thankful for, you know? Like, yeah. I think a lot of people um, don't do that. You know, they just are focused on what they don't have and um, what's wrong with every everybody else and division. 
you know, division. Every and what, like you're talking about politics. I'm not political, but what I noticed was people hating each other just because they're from a different party. Yeah. I know. Like we're all it's human silly. beings, right? Yeah, it's like silly. we just want the what's right. You know what I mean? So, but. And I think what you said something earlier too is so powerful. It's like we don't, you and I don't get to choose where we were born. But we get to choose how we behave in the world. And that's yeah. what you're saying. Just because you're born and raised here and you happen to be blessed, have Hawaiian blood, but there's also, that's a privilege and honor. So behave like one, you know? Well, what, what made me really appreciate, you know, Hawaii and, and, and just the, the way uh, we grew up is my mom. So my mom, she's from 8 Mile, Detroit, where they filmed uh, eight, 8 Mile. Yeah, Eminem, oh. Detroit. That's where my mom grew up. Wow. 313. So, so wow. right in that neighborhood, right there, right between eight and nine mile. Eight that's a street. Eight mile, nine mile, ten mile. Um, so my mom was there during the race riots and she almost got shot before, you know, because she used to drive an ice cream truck when she was a teenager. And um her mom died when she was three years old and her dad died when she was fourteen. So <gasps> her two older sisters and her two older brothers, she was the youngest, they all raised each other and raised my mom. And, um, you know, she left during the race rides. Her and her older sister were like, shit, we're out of here. There's no reason for us to stay here. You know, there's violence, there's racism. Let's, you know, so they, they got in their convertible Volkswagen and drove to Huntington Beach, California. Wow. And that's where my mom met Uncle Eddie, Uncle Tiger, Black Andy, um, uh, my dad. And they brought my mom and her sister back here from Huntington Beach that's where they met you so. gotta write a book I'm serious <laughs> no you gotta write a book what you've gone through and, and have the you ever history. thought about it you gotta mm, write a book n- no I haven't I haven't <laughs> but but I wrote a script I wrote a script like kind of loosely based on my life about um, I, I I had a meeting with um, who's the producer of um, uh, A Beautiful Mind Brian Grazier yeah I had a meeting with him last minute. He got called out, and I, and I met with his second in command. And I met with her, and she liked the idea. But they were they had bought the story of uh, the Bra Boys, and yeah. they thought it was kind of similar, in a way. So they're focusing on the Bra Boys, and, and really liked it. But so, but I want to try and pitch it again. Not a, my life story, but kind of based on a yeah. kid that had that background, right. where his mother was from another place and met his dad who was Hawaiian and yeah just growing up in Hawaii and but you know it's just, a beautiful love story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so um but but yeah like I said they got they bought the bra boys so how did COVID. you even get into acting um I was asked to uh audition for Blue Crush and I came in and and uh the guy asked me the director asked me what I would do if he dropped into me at pipe <laughs> 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 the white guy. Yeah. <laughs> so he asked me what I would do, and I and I said, ah, I mean, you don't want to know. Yeah, I, I I just pushed him against the wall, yeah. and I got in his face, and he was okay. Enough, enough. You you got the part. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. That's it. I, I don't really consider myself a good actor. It's it's a really hard craft. It yeah. really is. I have so much to learn. But did did you feel that in the in you know the person? The character you played at Blue Crush. It was me. It was you. They played ourselves. Yeah. We all played ourselves. All the local guys yeah. were just ourselves. Yeah. That we didn't, we're just, we're just so, if you can't be yourself, yeah. you got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been doing it about 30 something years up until that point. So yeah. When I watched it, I felt like it's legit, like the acting is legit because I didn't know it's you and yeah, your background. So yeah. when I saw it, mm-hmm. I saw like, oh, this guy's. Yeah, I would I would have loved to get another shot at it. I would love to do some formal acting training, but I, I don't think that's something that I want to do full time. If, if, if I have something come up and I can work on it and yeah. be a part of something, I'll, I'll give it a shot, you know, but that's not something I want to do every day. Those guys work a lot, man. They work a lot, and there it's a hard. It, to me, it's easier to surf like Big Sunset <laughs> than to than to act. You know, I'm not kidding. It's hard. It's really hard. It's frustrating. How was it to be on the set with all those boys at the Hawaii Five O? It, it's amazing, man. A lot of local people working there. Um, very, very intimidating. It's it's not easy to be on the screen. I'll tell you right now. You yeah, know, I can't imagine. Yeah, 
it's, it's and I know five, Hawaii Five O. They're super serious. I know when they used to do uh, when they used to film in downtown, they're fucking blocking all of downtown. Everybody yeah. hates it because yeah. they're they're not yeah. taking one street. They're yeah. like yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, no, it's serious, a big, it's a big production. production. Yeah. It was like ten years. Yeah, yeah. They did that, and I, I'm grateful because it kind of helped my um, me stay relevant with yeah. my sponsors, even. Yeah. So, like, it's like cross marketing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I probably wouldn't have been sponsored as long as I have been if I didn't have like that crossover. Yeah. Into acting, so it definitely helped me in that in that situation, you know, because I mean, I've pretty much been sponsored for decades you know yeah. mean, a lot of people they don't they aren't they aren't right. sponsored for that long what so. about uh, the character Kavika Kavika well he's kind of based on Uncle Eddie <laughs> oh he yeah. is yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is so yeah, awesome no. they wanted it, it was like the Kapu is supposed to be like the Hui yeah yeah yeah, yeah and yeah. Uh, what what was kind of disappointing to me because when I was introduced, the same character in Magnum P.I. Yeah. crossed over. Um, all of a sudden, I had a chop shop, and I dealt with st stolen cars. But if you follow Hawaii Five-0, all those seasons that I was in it, I was a good guy. I was helping McGarrett yeah. catch criminals. Exactly. They would, uh, they would come to me and ask me about different criminals. Yeah. And even Tonawai was one of the criminals one time. You know, which was kind of funny because <laughs> Tanawai is not afraid of anybody. And here I'm supposed to be the guy he's terrified of, right? Yeah. You know, so it was kind of funny. He was good. I thought Tanawai was, was, was great in that. I think I'm um, surprised Tanawai doesn't do more acting. I think your role, Kavika, your character was on point. I mean, it, it's for you, it's acting. I guess you say, oh, acting is not... You know, it's 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 not an it's easy really thing. Hard. But yeah. when we look at the character Kavika, yeah, you're intimidating. You look like yeah. it's for real. You're gonna do. You know, you're gonna. You <laughs> He's playing Eddie. Eddie. He's playing Eddie. Did yeah. you see the part <laughs> I did with Tonawai though? That was pretty. He, he was a criminal. Him and the other guy, and they, I had them tied up in front of my truck. Oh so my I don't know God. if you guys saw that right at uh, Kuloa Ranch, right in front of the 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 bunker, right wow. there on the road. Yeah, with a big four wheel drive diesel truck. It was pretty cool. <laughs> That's but insane. No, I've had a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun acting. Um, I just had the guys from Deadliest Catch Out on my shark cage boat yesterday. Oh, so two, no two, way. Two, two of the guys in that show got a spinoff series that they're shooting on the Big Island now. And one of them had a, uh, they're from the Cornelia Marie, it's Josh and Casey. And one of them had a fear of sharks and they wanted to conquer that fear. So they came out with me today. I think they're with Juan and Ocean. They're going to go without the cage, so. Wow. wow. Yeah. So no, nah, it's been it's been cool. It's been cool. Learned a lot. Of all the jobs that you had, if you can do just one, what would that be? Of everything you've done in your life now at the, at this point in your life. One thing you know what, do if I can give all that if I can do this on a regular basis until you know, until the sunset comes and grab me, what what would that be? Cause you have so much passion, you have so many gifts in so many ways. Um I would like to get into real estate maybe. Do mm. some real estate development or something, buying and selling, rent, yeah, yeah. rent, get rentals and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I want to get the boat set up to where they can run without me, and I right. don't have to do it because I have a whale watching boat, I have the shark cage boat, and then I have a commercial fishing boat that I have to. I'm doing some work on right now. Hopefully, I can get that out there. And my dream would be to be able to step away and have some really good captains that I can trust to run the boats because I'm I'm too old to be in the sun every day. Right, right. You know? Unless I swell well, I can't look like you. <laughs> I I wanna Unless look like you swell is firing. I can't believe yeah. that Kal Alexander just said he uh, cannot uh, be uh, in the sun too much. <laughs> well, Unless it's firing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Unless it's firing. The, the sun is like you yeah. know, I'll be it's honest with you. It's not your best friend. I actually, it's not your I best actually friend. retired from surfing pipeline a couple of years ago. I don't surf pipeline anymore. So, um, it's just too dangerous, you know. And and people, when they, I talk to them about that, they'll be like, "Oh, what about Michael? Oh, he's still surfing, you know, pipeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 61, 62. But the thing about Uncle Mike and Uncle Derek that a lot of people don't realize is that they got their shit set up already. They don't got no mortgages. Yeah. They got no, you know what I mean? They got their houses. They got their compounds all set up already. Yeah. All their shit's paid off. 
All they gotta do is surf. Their kids are doing good. Yeah. Coco's killing it. Yeah. Fucking Mason's yeah, killing, Mason it. killing yeah. it. They're killing it. Yeah. Um, you know, McCoy's doing good. He's got a following on Instagram. Kiana's good. Uncle Derek left them with a compound, one acre, three houses. You know, it, 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 so that's something you have to have when you surf pipeline. You either have to be young, full of energy, and and just clear-minded, focused on surfing pipeline. If you have any business, any other stress on your mind, you shouldn't be out there. You can die. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uncle Mike and Uncle Derek, all their shit's paid off. All their shit's good. That's why they're still able to surf pipeline at a high level and not worry because their kids are good. All their bills are paid. No mortgages. But you so, go wa Waimea sometimes, no? No, I'm not going to surf Waimea anymore either. No? No. So you just... Big sunset. That's going to be the biggest stuff. No outer reefs anymore. I want to watch my grandson grow up. Oh, yeah. that's wanna, so sweet. I want to watch my grandson grow up. I want to watch my kids grow up. You know, I want to help them be, be there for them. And if, if, if you're not into it 100% when it's that big, you know, you shouldn't be out there. And yeah. I've always told people that when I saw people out at Pipeline that I didn't think should be out there, some people thought I was being a dick. But I was actually helping those people. Like, 100%. Hey, you know what? You, I don't think you should be out here. You should go in. You know what I mean? I wasn't like... So yeah, a lot of times it was, it was just like, brah, you, yeah. you, you, you could get fucking die. <laughs> or, or you, you hurt others. You could get somebody else killed. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the worst part, I And think. people misconstrued that. You know, they thought I was just trying to like, you know, just kick everybody out of the water. But a lot of people don't belong out there. And you can see it in their eyes. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's fucking dangerous. It'll kill you. You know, and we've had good surfers die out there, really good surfers. Like Malik, that kid, oh, you know, he yeah. was a great surfer. Yeah. You know? Freaking look look at you-know-who from Maui. just got his scalp totally cool. undone, you know? Um, uh, Dusty. Dusty Payne? Yeah. When was that? No, two, three winters ago. I oh. remember his head, like... Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that place is, is it, dangerous. It's, yeah, it's... And... and yeah, I don't really feel the urge to have to surf out there anymore. I don't feel the urge to have to surf the outer reefs. Yeah. You know, the outer reefs are gnarly. It's gnarly out there. I have, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. No, just no, no, would I ever want to. The, the <laughs> bigger it gets, the deeper water the waves break yeah. in. So up to 30-foot faces, you can surf Pipeline, Sunset, Haleiwa. And then anything bigger than that, you got to go to the outer reefs, Waimea. So Waimea, you know. Phantom. I don't like naming all the spots, yeah. you know, but everybody knows. <laughs> yeah, everybody yeah. knows the spots. Yeah, yeah. Phantoms, <laughs> Himalayas, yeah. you know, Avalanche, oh. you know. So, and there's a lot of guys that just live for that shit, you know, but I, I'm I'm good. I caught a lot of waves. I caught yeah. a lot of waves. I'll have fun surfing small waves now, you know. I'm, 100%. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in that club. <laughs> I'm in that club right now. But you're still every day on your boat, no? I mean, you're still going out almost every day? Um, right now... Um, I got my whale watching boat getting painted. As soon as that boat's done getting painted, I'll be driving the tours on that boat. Um, but like I said, I, I wanna, I don't wanna be on the boats yeah. every day. It yeah. really takes a lot of energy. You know, every day in the sun, all day, you're exhausted. Yeah, you're exhausted. So I, I want to find a good crew. What about the young kid the that boats. was with you when I came out with you on the boat? He's a, he's he's a deckhand, so he's there to support the captain, and he needs more time. To yeah. learn he's gonna be good captain though i think he's gonna be real good but still young 21 yeah, yeah. you know it's something that takes years and years yeah. oh, and yeah. years and years to you know to know and be aware of everything that could happen you know with the people with the boat and just you know it's it's a lot you know because you have to be r responsible for the boat you got to be conscientious about the boat you got to be conscientious about the people because I, I want somebody who is going to show the people a good time, um, help them have a better vacation. For me, it's not just about their time on the boat, but when they leave my boat, I want them to know where the safe snorkeling is, where the best place to eat is, where to watch a sunset, you know, and they can call me, text me if they need help or any, you know, they yeah. want to know. While, I'm, while my people are on the island, they can call me, text me anytime. You ride on my boat, you can, you can ask me anything you want. Get wow, that's anything. incredible. That's what I do yeah. for my people. I yeah. actually took uh, um, our kids and our friends, and we all we went uh, to see Kala 
and it was a awesome experience. It was pre-COVID. Pre-COVID. So we had a we had Pre-COVID. a good crew out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pre-COVID, of course. Oh yeah. So and it was a people. good. It was such a great experience. Such a great experience. Yeah, appreciate it. Everybody appreciate was uh, yeah. stoked. And actually, we realized that you know a lot about sharks. Yeah, and and just the culture too. Like that's the thing. Like. I don't want to just focus about the sharks, but I want to focus on where the sharks fit in in our culture and and everything about what you're looking at, like how the waves were, for, you know, how the reef, the channels were formed. Um, all the all the best waves in Hawaii were formed by fresh water. So wherever you have a channel, um, you know, it's usually a stream, a spring, or or a river, and and reef doesn't grow where the fresh water flows so if you look at every world-class surf break in hawaii it's there's a river a stream pipeline you have a a, a spring mm-hmm. if you look behind pipeline you see the valley that valley is where the water's coming and and then that's what's creating the channel sunset you have a river um Waimea, you have a yeah. river you know puerto point yep so Hanale, honolua you know all the best places in hawaii all have a river that cut that channel through the reef so and that I, creates the basically the if good you, ways. If you guys get a chance, you guys should yeah. Because if you have the reef across the whole area, it's just gonna break yeah. all at once, right? You have to have a channel, and you have to have a uh, so the reef the wave peels, yeah. right? So if you guys get a chance, you gotta come on the whale watching boat. The whales are amazing. They're here right now. We saw a couple couple years already. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's really. So wow. these whales they travel three thousand miles to get here yeah. in three. Uh, three to six weeks they get here and they tr- they swim up to 16,000 miles a year and, and while they're That's here they insane. don't they don't eat any food so they lose up to 15,000 pounds the adults so while they're here so what is but the they're pur- fucking yeah, here right? yeah what's the yes. purpose of the whales <laughs> going through <laughs> That's Hawaii why they lose the weight <laughs> yeah what's the pur- are they going back exactly, home to it, give birth exactly or, or? what no here they give they birth come all here the... to give birth wow. they come here to fuck and mate <laughs> yeah and only well, Hawaiian water. Well, what it is because it's warm, huh? Well, well, it's more to it than that. It's warm. It's yeah. good for gestation. The the speeds up the pregnancy. No orcas, no mm. predators. You know the 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 humpbacks are not worried about any sharks. How do they know all that? That's crazy. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. A, and every year they come. You know what yeah. is even more amazing w- that you probably didn't even think about. It, the this is the the planet. The you have the equator, right? You have two different groups of humpbacks. You huh? have the so- southern humpbacks, you have the northern humpbacks. The the southern humpbacks are two-thirds white in color. The northern humpbacks that we have are two-thirds black. And so when when the when the northern humpbacks go south to mate and give birth in Hawaii, the humpbacks in the in the southern hemisphere that were just in Samoa and Tonga and in Fiji go south to the, the arctic so they're going in the same direction at the same time for the exact opposite reason so you have the southern going down south to eat at the same time the northern ones are coming down south to mate to breed in hawaii S- that's right crazy. so it's when in april may all the whales in hawaii will go north to alaska and all the whales in the southern by the south pole will swim up north to Tahiti, Fiji, Tonga, where they will do the exact same yeah. thing that the Hawaiian whales just did. And all the whales in the su- northern hemisphere have a, the same song. It changes a little bit every year. And all the southern whales have their own song. And and it, it's the same every year with a little bit of changes. So very interesting. Very, very That's amazing. incredible. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> okay, yeah. podcast over. <laughs> <laughs> But what made you what made you suddenly uh, uh, go into the sharks? Was it because you loved the sharks, or because you had an opportunity with the boat and the love came after? Yeah, I I, I started the the business with one of my uncles. I did the whale watching first, and just loved the ocean, and just saw that there was a, a room for another yeah. trip. Uh, um, I wanted I didn't want to do the sharks at first. I wanted to do my own thing. Um, it's just so easy to sell the shark business. You know, when you tell uh, tourists. You want to go see some sharks? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, wow. You want to go see some whales? They're like, you know, the sharks, the whales are not on the movies for decades. <laughs> about, yeah. you know, crazy man-eating whales. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it's different, right? So it's easier to sell the sharks. So I didn't want to do the sharks, but um, a couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to do it with my with Makua. And so 
uh, we got that boat, uh, another friend of ours, uh, John. So we, there's three of us with that. And, you know, honestly, I feel like the whale watching tour is still a better tour because you see all the surf breaks. You mm. go down the entire North Shore. You, you, you have a little more time on the boat. Um, but they're both special because, I mean, in our culture, everything is in, 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 in the world has a spirit and is special. Like even the rocks have a life, have, a, have, a, have mana. Yeah. You know, that's how, how we, we, we thought. Everything was special, uh, especially the animals. We, in, in Hawaiian culture, we coexist. We, we didn't believe in ownership. The land was like a separate living being that we coexisted with it, okay. like the land. You know what I mean? It wasn't something that we owned. We just, we lived with it. Yeah. Uh, we were like the stewards of it. So, you know, just, you know, just life after surfing and honestly, the money. I mean, I was watching the, the other shark company. They make, they make a lot of money. And, you know, it, life is expensive in Hawaii. So, you know, that's part of it. But just being around the ocean all my life. When, on Kauai, right out of high school, I worked on the Nepali coast. You know, I don't know if you've been down there, but that, mm. yeah, that place is very yeah. beautiful. And, um, you know, I learned a lot from the uncles that I work with about our culture and, and, and even just reinforced um, my belief in how special Hawaii is and how lucky I am to grow up here. You know, until I seen the Nepali coast, I, I already knew Kauai was beautiful. But when I went down there, I was just blown away. Yeah. Just, I mean, you got to go down there. It's just it's the most beautiful place in Hawaii. And Molokai, the Kalopapa coast over there, that's pretty similar. But, I mean, just what's amazing about the Nepali coast is the largest population of Hawaiians on Kauai was down that coastline. And it's the most rugged coastline on the whole island. It's the hardest to get to. Um, in the summer, you can take a boat. It's super easy. But in the winter, when the waves are big, the only way to go down there is by the trail, right? And the reason was the lack of um, rain there wasn't a whole lot of rain but there's the highest elevated swamp in the world is in the Waimea Canyon and so it feeds fresh water into the Nepali coast every day so it's perfect for the Hawaiians to farm and uh, you know just it's easy to protect from the other tribes of Hawaiians that maybe want to try and take it you know because back in our culture you could fight over land yeah you know um, it was seasons for fighting seasons for peace in our culture so in the Makahiki season no fighting allowed. So all the Hawaiians, all the villages get together, celebrate life. But once the makahiki was over, you could you could go back to fighting. And all of that about Hawaiian, you learned from those guys? and A lot of it I yeah. did learn from. Just growing up, you know, if you listen to your uncles and aunties, yeah. you know, it's something that gets passed on. And the hard part about our culture was the, we didn't have a written language. So we didn't have a written language until the white man came. So all of our history... All of our genealogy was passed on through the hula and the chants and the dance. So if it wasn't for that, and, and that's unfortunately can be lost if the people don't continue to yeah, practice yeah, it. Yeah. So, Well, tell, tell the audience, uh, j just so they understand, when you take the people out, what are you doing? You take the people on your boat for the shark tour I'm talking about. Yeah. And then I think I remember it was three miles out. Yeah, we go about three miles out and, you know, we, we, we tell them about Hale Eva, you know, um, you know, we usually ask them where they're staying and, you know, you know, we give them tips on other things to do wherever they're staying on that side. But, you know, we, the main thing is we go out there and, and let them know how important sharks are to the environment. You know, they're like the white blood cells of the ocean. So in your body, if you have disease or sickness or virus, the white blood cells will attack it and keep your body clean mm -hmm. and healthy. And that's what the shark does for the ocean. So any dead, dying, diseased animals, they will go and kill them and uh, make sure the, that population, that that type of fish is, you know, there's no, uh, you know, weak, weak link or weak uh, members of that species, you know, it just keeps it all, keeps the ocean clean. It's so amazing. the sharks are super important super for important, marine super life. Super important for marine life. It, it, do you, like, do you have, a, like, any inclination why there is more shark attack now? And then, than ever in in, in in Hawaiian Islands, and and I'm curious to see what what your reason. Absolutely. You spend you spend your whole lifetime in the ocean. More people. Ah, that's okay. it. Simple that's as it. that. Got it. There's yeah. more people entering the ocean waters, so therefore, more cars on the highway, more car accidents. Ah, right? but duh. but I always thought it was protection. But of the a cra news, but crazy fact 
Yeah. More people get bit by people every year than sharks. 100%. Way more. <laughs> <Yeah>. Way more. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't even really have that much. Yeah. I think it's like four or five a year in Hawaii. Yeah. yeah, yeah and then yeah. in the world, it's really not that much. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just... The last one, the, a couple of weeks ago in Hanalo, oh, was, that was a... Fight. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah, that, that is sad. sad. Big bite. But I never pal Big bite, huh? Big shark. Yeah, I saw the I saw the bite on the board, but yeah. I didn't I didn't see. I mean, obviously they're not going to show the guy. Yeah. But I didn't hear about where he was bit, like yeah. his leg or his body, because I think if you b get bit on your leg or your arm, you have a better chance of survival. But right. you get bit in your body by a shark yeah, that yeah, big, yeah. it's not going to be good. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the the fact of the matter that shark is. Is, is probably not targeting this man either. It's a, probably a mistake. Yeah. Because if sharks ate people, thousands of people would be dying every day. People 100%. are the slowest animal yeah. in the ocean. <laughs> they re really are, right? You're right. So if You're they right. wanted us, yeah. they could kill hundreds of us every yeah. day, and it's not happening. Right. Like yeah. yesterday, not one person in Hawaii was bit. Today, not one person was bit. <laughs> Three days ago, not. It, it's that simple. If you look at the facts. Yep. That that alone will tell you yeah. that sharks don't target men. Yeah. Because if they did, we'd be so much people dying every uh, day. How would you explain those people that do the free dive with the sharks? Because yours is in the cage, correct? Yeah. But but the one they're doing it outside, I mean, they're just not afraid. They're believed that well, the shark the, won't do it, nothing. It just goes back to what I said. They don't target people. It's not. They're not on their prey list. We're about the same size as them. We're an apex predator as well. They're looking. They're scavengers. They're looking for dead, dying, and weak animals. They're not going head to head with big, bigger. You know what I mean? They're not. So is it true you need to look them in the eyes? And Absolutely. You want to yes. know where they are all the time. You know, because they are a wild animal. You yeah. know what I mean? And and like you and I, what is this? Oh, you want to know what something is? We can pick it up, turn it around, hold it, feel it. Right? They can't. The only way they can figure out what something is sometimes is to bite it, is to nip at it. That's, yeah. That's all they have to 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 check something out. Right. Is their is their nip and their bite? Yeah to figure out what it is and usually when people get attacked murky water um poor lighting the sun went down um just had a big rain a lot of mud in the water so they just see a silhouette and what is that so the only way they can find out what that is is to go bite it right so as long as you're in clear water they're they don't target people like I, it just goes right back to what i just said yeah. if they did hundreds thousands of people be dying every day right now all these people out here in the water yeah. be getting killed right now. So what do we need to, if I do see a shark in the water, what's the first don't thing? Don't panic. To, don't panic. Don't panic. Just hold your ground. You, you know, and, and and all you can do is keep, lean towards me, and that's all you can do right here. Lean towards me again. That's it. That's all you got to do. You on, have to. On the head? On the yeah, nose on the kind? head, for sure. Right here. Right there. And then they go back. Well, they're not, they're not going to continue yeah. because you're not backing down. But you don't want to be. You don't want to let them yeah. go until they're bumping their head yeah. right here, right? <laughs> like what What's right next to the head is the yeah. mouth. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so you you want to you want to you want to keep the head. Yeah. And I like to push the head down like this because the mouth is underneath. Yeah. So you don't ever want to push them up to where the mouth is here. Yeah. So you just want to push them, and 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 I don't recommend hitting them. Yeah. You know I know if if they're like spear fishermen, they've poked them sometimes. You I mean they're not gonna kill the shark, but if they have dead fish and bloody fish, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, it's, you're trying to eat too. Yeah, these fishermen are trying to eat and catch fish for to eat for their families too. Yeah, so is the shark. So we have just as much right to catch fish as the shark does. You know, we've been doing this for for centuries as well, catching fish, right? So do you eat only fish or also meat, eat meat? I eat meat. I eat meat. I eat. Uh, I try to eat. Um, grass-fed beef you know try not to eat too much beef anymore at my age try to eat more fish ground turkey you know elk deer i try to eat healthy you know and but you stopped drinking completely yeah eight and a half years ago wow. just done i wish i quit earlier yeah you do know? you think it changed you a lot once you stopped well it's crazy because you get more sensitive too you know you see stuff that you maybe you didn't notice before you know about people's attitudes and just how the world is you see stuff you know, when you're drinking and you're you're always partying and having a good time, you know, it's like I just noticed that Isaiah Moniz yeah. just went through a program. So proud of that guy and Landon was with him and Kalara Grace yeah. and I didn't quit till I was forty three. If these guys can figure it out now, yeah. 
that's well, gonna be to so them. amazing for yeah, these kids because yeah, yeah. they got so much talent. Like you know what I mean? These, yeah. Those kids are talented kids. If they, all all three of them great surfers. Isaiah, Kala, Landon. Yeah. The only thing that can stop them is them. Right. Right. As for a lot of us, the only thing that could stop you is you. You know, you who, got the who whole gave world. you? Who, who gave you that wisdom that you suddenly said, "Fuck, I don't want to drink anymore. I see. I, I don't want to." Mark Healy. Okay. Um, Grant Twiggy Baker. Mm. Dave Wasso. Wow. Danilo Kuto. Um, Reef McIntosh. Those guys gave me the wisdom, because they're so fucking crazy and they like to drink so much. They they, fuck, <laughs> they 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 <laughs> those fuckers got me fucked up. I got that's who I was drinking with the last yeah. night I drank. Yeah, was was those guys. So I was like, and you, and you know what it was. Leading up to that surf trip, that was the best waves any of us ever seen in our whole lives. In, in where so were I, you? Were you guys in Fiji? Fiji. <gasps> yeah, we're in Fiji. The club break. Yeah, it was twenty feet. You know, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about that, but. Uh, leading up to that trip, I was sober for one year. So my system was clear. My mind was, you know, my, I was pure. Yeah. You know, I was clean. So I really got fucked up that night. So I got caught up and easy to get caught up in the excitement with Danilo. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if you know Danilo. <sighs> but, oh, my God. Cole Christensen. Those guys like to have a good time. And yeah. we just caught the best waves in our lives. So I got really fucked up that night. I felt like I was going to die. For the next week so i just i was like fuck this already i'm done no program just want to be want to be more clear um just be a better father better person you know just was over it just yeah i always felt like a lot of these i mean it's so many it's like in hawaii we have so many great talent and the funny thing in the surfing industry too right it's like all these guys have great talent but what what one thing they always succumb to is is drugs and alcohol you know, I've seen so many great guys, like just phenomenal. But, and 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 now when you I'm listening to your life story, it has to derive from that really, like you said earlier, right? You know, um, about Ray Cooper. They come from a strong family with loving Unreal, parents. Man. I know when you don't have that, subconsciously, I think you beginning to gravitate so that to numb it and also try to fit yeah, in. Yeah, and that's what that's what's going on. Yeah, and that's uh, happening. That's what the you right. know you're at. Everybody's having a good time surfing. Some people yep. can do it in moderation. Right. Some people can have a good time, stay in control, still make good decisions, go to work the next day. Yeah. Some of I us was cannot. never one. Yeah, yeah. I was I, never one I'm, of them. I'm pretty much, I feel like me, I have a lot in common with Landon, Isaiah, Kala. We, we like to have a good time. I was young too, but if those guys, I swear to God, if those kids can learn how to, because um, I don't feel like we are the guys that can moderate, Yeah. you know? Um, they remind me a lot of me, but I, I, it took me till 43 to quit. If I, I'm telling you, if those kids, they all surf really good. They're all talented. I mean, they're going to, life is going to be good. Yeah. You know, I just, some guys can, some guys can't. So I yeah. just feel like those guys should, they should just stay on this path and just surf. Did you only drink or do also sometimes drugs? I used to do some drugs. Yeah. I, I never was into meth or, or, uh, heroin. You know, or any of that shit. Just smoke weed and... I snorted some coke. Yeah. Know? Yeah. I used, to, I used to be able to have sex all night on coke. That was one of the appealing yeah. things. That's, what <laughs> That's the it. benefits. I, I never some done guys coke. couldn't. No, it's some guys couldn't even get it up. Yeah. When they're, yeah. They're, I could do it all. I could get it up all night. On yeah. that shit, so. No, it's true. I, you're not the. Fr I don't. But, I haven't done that. But I don't. I don't. I don't miss that shit. Yeah. At yeah. All. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. know. I don't. I wish I quit a lot earlier. Yeah. You yeah. know, but you, you can't. The past is the past, right? So yeah, just, and for me, I don't have any temptation either. I don't yeah. feel like drinking. I don't, you know, I can be around a bar like this, and I don't feel, I don't, you know. Yeah, I yeah. just, I just know how I felt and how many, how many nights, how many, how many hangovers, you know, and just then you, your behavior comes erratic. Yeah, you know, you get grouchy. Yeah, you get. You know, you, you, you miss days, you wake up fucking one o'clock, the waves are good, or you, you know, you miss time with your families, yeah. you know what I mean? With, with you know, the, the, the things that are more, really important, yeah. you right. know what I mean? You get caught up in that, that, that revelry and having a good time, it's just, 
You got to be focused. How many kids you got? I have five. Five kids. Yeah, five kids. All same mother? No, four different mothers. Four, and you they know. live on Hawaii? And I feel like if I wasn't partying and drinking, yeah. you know, maybe I would have been, you know, a better man and found one good woman and had all my kids from, you know, you always think yeah. about that stuff. That's what I always thought. You know, maybe if I wasn't so, such a, out there having a good time, I, I would have found, I would have been more solid at a younger age, found found a better woman and stayed with her and had all my kids with her. Yeah. You know, because, but it is what it is. You, you, your first wife, you, that's the uh, Mahina's mom? No, my first wife is Teresa, the mother of my son, Ava. Of a puhi. And he lives uh, here? He's in Florida. Florida. Yeah, he's in Florida. So I had him when I was 23. Wow. And um, that's when I got my real estate license. Oh, a lot of good stuff happening. But then I went through the hurricane. And hurricane Iniki? Yeah, I went through the hurricane. And um, there was a lot of transient people after that. And um, I ended up beating up this guy that ran my dog over. Just bad. ran your dog yeah, over? Well, he was speeding down our street, which is like 25 miles per hour speed limit, and he was going about 60. Jesus. And I ended up, I saw the guy and, you know, chased him off. And, you know, I thought I would find my, I never found my dog. Uh, so I, I guess it must have ran off and died somewhere after he hit my dog. But I saw the guy like a week later and ended up beating the guy up, and I, I, didn't have any money, so I, I I didn't get a good lawyer, and maybe I could have got less time, but I got five years in prison, so ended up doing about three and a half out of the five. So, uh, were you shocked that from beating someone that ran over your dog, you suddenly in a total different situation? Now well, you're facing five years. Well, I got the five years. No, I but I'm it, saying but like one mistake of you not staying I know, composed yeah, I yeah, mean suddenly yeah, has such for sure, a for sure. uh, pivot but I, in your I also, life I also made him give me money too for the dog because that's kind of how I made part of my living was I bred dogs and I sold my dogs so you can't do shit like that you know yeah. what I mean so I got extortion assault but definitely learned a lot learned a lot being locked up and may, may, may I ask you one uh, question when you go into you go into jail or you're you're Kal Alexander do you have a respect or do you need to still go there and you are terrified you're afraid um, I'm definitely afraid yeah for sure um, I was 23 years old I was, a, I was still a kid yeah I was a kid wow. but uh, I was I'm smart enough to know just keep my mouth shut and I was over here in Halava State Penitentiary and the smallest time sentence in Halaba is five years. So the last thing you want to do is be a little bitch and complain about your five years. So yeah. uh, you, you, they, you will not make any friends yeah. there. They will, you know. So there's guys in there doing life for murder and you name it. So I, I just was quiet. I didn't have any problems. I, was just, I didn't talk unless I was spoken to. Mm. And, uh Looking back now, your live call at age 52, I, I am so impressed and I'm touched by your story because I think it's so, none of us are perfect human beings. And I think it's about looking at our life and realize where we came from, the mistake we made, and how we correct the wrong and become a better human and hopefully become a better person in our family. When you look back at your life now, you know, from, from birth to, to now 52, um, for all those young guys out there, you know, you know, because like, boy, you've, I'm sure you've seen a version of you all over Kauai and, and also all over Oahu. What's some of the advice, some of the things you learn? Go, man, you know what? Here's what I would do. N number one is just um, learn from your mistakes. Because yeah. if you don't, then you just, you know, it's just a waste. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whether... Whatever it is, you just learn from it and never let it happen again. You know what I mean? You just, that's that's the best thing that I've learned. And yeah. and let me tell you, like, right now, during this shit, it's been, you know, even, I've been depressed. I've, I've watched people lose their businesses. Me My too. friends me lose too. their businesses. Yeah. And, you know, um, it's been terrible. Just the whole mentality. But I would say, number one, um, just learn from everything that happens because then it's not a, w a waste. Right, so no yeah. matter how bad it is, if you're alive 
and you still have another chance to live a life and make something with yourself, it's not over. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can still correct things, yeah. you know, if it wasn't that bad of a mistake. If, I mean, obviously, you make really bad mistakes, you're dead or you're in yeah. prison, right? right? But if it isn't that bad, um, you can always write that wrong. And I, I think um, a lot of people, that's their was their biggest problem is not learning from whatever happened and not moving on from it, you know, processing it. And um, and also I would say to the young guys, respect respect the elders and, you know, uh, appreciate them for paving the way. You yeah. know what I mean? I always, man, I my elders, I, I always try to pick their brain and I like to hear stories about how it was before, you know, and... Um, hear it from from their perspective and their, their memories about how shit used to be because right. it's changing man it's different so yeah I mean just respect your elders pick their brain you don't know how long they're going to be here but learn from them take what you can from them and uh, but yeah number one would be learning from the mistakes man I made a lot and you know I'm still learning you know, yep. every day that's what life's about just learning and and I know you've been also uh, heavily involved in uh, with Mali Ola Foundation and this is for uh, people with uh, cystic fibrosis yeah yeah we we we, uh, we started after a while just helping any kids all kids like uh, kids with cancer um, any conditions we welcome them to our events you know and um, it's amazing because the what we found out was it, it turned into like a support group and that wasn't our goal in the, in the beginning it was just to give these kids something to be stoked about and yeah. ha help them feel normal you know because they're so sick all the time you know they have a lung disease the the initial kids we helped um they do a saline treatment every day with a nebulizer so they breathe in this salt water mixture like this this mist yeah it helps break up all this congestion in their lungs, and that's what cystic fibrosis is. It's a, just an overabundance of, of phlegm, which all of our bodies produce, yeah. but their bodies produce way too much. And so they're almost drowning in it. So their whole treatment every day is to get it out. So they get a vibrating vest that shakes it up so they can cough it out. They get the saline treatment. Oh saline is like salt water. Yeah, so right. we, our idea was, me and my friends, James and Charlie Dunlop, we we decided to create this this uh you know this 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 whole uh foundation to help these kids you know replace some of those treatments with a, with a surf session so when they go surf they actually feel good that the yeah, salt, salt water is helping them they're to coughing breathe. all that stuff out they're because oh, that's their yeah. whole life every day is they gotta cough this shit out vibrating vest cough it out the nebulizer vest to cough it out they gotta get it out because they're just drowning in it um and what we found out was while we're out in the water with the kids, all the parents are on the beach talking to each other, like Aww. sharing their stories. Like yeah. support Some system. of them are doing really good, hammers, just yeah. fucking just so positive, And they're helping the other parents that are having a hard time. So they may become lifelong friends. The fucked up part about it is they really can't get together any other time than these events because... You got to keep these kids 10 to 15 feet apart. They can have different bacteria that can make this kid sick and even die. Like we got to keep them, not necessarily die right away, but definitely give yeah. them a new bacteria that could really yeah. deplete their health really f quickly. So they can't even hang out like other than at our events. Because we have a, at our events, we have nurses, doctors, sanitary wipes. And after we use the board, we'll, you know, wipe the board down. And before we give it to another yeah. kid, um, and right now, obviously, there's no way we could yeah. do Everything anything. Is yeah, because these kids are the most vulnerable kids in the world to this right. virus. Right, right. they oh, have yeah. lung disease. Yeah. Yeah. This is a lung <laughs> virus, <laughs> yeah. right? So yeah, they're yeah. they're hiding oh. out. They can't go anywhere. That's these insane. kids, oh yeah, the parents, if they go anywhere. They gotta fucking have, you know, they gotta be fucking gloved up because they can't get their kids sick. Does it? It would affect them really bad. So, I think it's amazing that you're always willing to, uh, you know, uh, volunteer and kind of donate your time uh, f for others. I think that energy that you get back is well. Well, that's some other advice that I could give to younger guys too. Is if you if you can, 
if you're in the position to help anyone, you got to help them. You know what I mean? Because everybody needs a help sometimes. And I feel like if you think about it, some of the guys in the world that help the most people were actually the ones that needed the most help back in the day. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's why they're helping so much because they were one of the people that needed a lot of help back in the day. They really, you know what I mean? That makes them feel whole. That completes them and makes them, validates who they are. You know what I mean? So I, I would say to the young guys, try to help as much as you can. And even if you're 15 or 16, people forget. I think kids forget that they even have kids that look up to them. Like you're only 15, but you have these 10 year olds looking yeah. at you. So you 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 always got to be aware of who's watching what you're doing, you know what I mean? You, you know, you definitely always want to be conscious of, of the younger people that are coming up that are looking to you, so. Were you riding on Dick Brewer boards back in Kauai? Who I was. was. Yeah. Oh I my was. God. I got a pretty cool story. I had a 10-6 um, Dick Brewer, and I actually walked into his shaping room one day, and it was sitting on the, um, it was just the foam. It just got, it just had gotten shaped, and it was beautiful. It was, it was like, one of the nicest boards I've ever seen. Just not, no paint, just finished Ooh. shaped. I go, who's this for? And he said, uh, there was this guy, Parnell, that didn't surf, but he, he had money, and he wanted to hang it on his wall. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, 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 no. It's not going to work. This is, this is going to be my board. And Dick Brewer, didn't, he didn't argue. He, he was like, okay, and he gave it to me. And then uh, I forget who glassed it, but I had that board for a long time. And I painted it red because I didn't surf with a leash out on a land. So in case I lost it, I could find it. And years later, Jeff Hackman um, offered me $3,000 and two ten sixes for it because he thought it was the board getting all the waves out of Hana land. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was partially the board. It was partially the board, right. but it, it had a lot to do with me, too. I put, <laughs> I put a lot of time, time on that board. into, into Honolulu, yeah. too, just surfing the wave. You yeah, know? yeah. And uh, he couldn't surf it and because and, he it was a single fin. Oh. And here you have this icon, this living legend yeah. who I looked up to when I was younger, who, yeah. who's just, you know, one of the best surfers ever to walk the yeah. planet, but he couldn't surf a single fin anymore because wow. he'd been surfing thrusters for That's so long. Right. And he had a hard time surfing it, and so it's it's actually hanging in a wall in France. Wow! Yeah, at his house, uh, right, close to his house. I think right. it's at a restaurant. Right, but, right. But one of the boards he get I got from him was a yellow ten six that worked amazing. So I got a lot of waves on that board too. Single but, fin uh, or try? Single. Oh, single. Dang. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't. Wow. He didn't. I don't know. He got them. He, he got him to make them like mine, but he really honestly was riding thrusters for so long. Ever since Simon came out with yeah, him, yeah, you yeah, know, he, yeah. he was riding a thruster. And, and I I just, for some reason, I just I just love surfing the single fin out there. We're oh, good in so the barrel. So hard as hell. I don't know how you uh, do it. It's like driving a car without power steering. Seriously. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, that's that's yeah, only but, different. But you have not, to be at such Hale a... Lea, when it's 15 to 20 feet, you're yeah. not trying to do cutbacks. Right, right. You're, not try, you're just trying to fucking just ride trim. this huge yeah. barrel. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's all I was doing. So yeah. it worked for me. But now yeah. I ride when the waves are big, quad. Yeah. Yeah. Quad's faster. the ticket. Ooh. Yeah, just faster. Yeah, yeah. You know, super fast. But all my boards, I get five boxes so I can ride it as a thruster or a quad, mm. you know. I'm just, I got a couple more questions and then I'm done. Favorite wave ever, because you travel all over the world. Uh, that's number one. Number two, any wave in anywhere in Hawaii that's close to Hanalei that you would say, eh. Uh, not really. Honolulu? Honolulu. Come I never on. surfed Honolulu. <gasps> I never surfed it. There, we have another wave on Kauai that is just like that, but better. Is it? Yeah, yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to talk about. I'm sorry. Cut those names I'm sorry. Out. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. I'm wanna, sorry. I don't want to. My apology. My apology. How about favorite wave all over the world? By that one. Right <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My, my boys will be. They'll be <laughs> Listen, found. I pal out on my birthday. That, to me, that's a better wave, though. It's, mm, a, it's, a, definitely I, it's a better so wave. heavy, it's, it's, and the local scarier. kicked me out. I pal oh, yeah, out. No, no, the boys. I pal out. You know, I'm from Wall. Me and Brian that surf there and nowhere else. I like, palo out, bro. He looks at me. Local. He goes, "Go in already. That's it. 
and I turned around and went and didn't even catch one wave. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but yeah, you gotta bleep I, that. I'm sorry. I almost died a couple times out there. It's heavy. I almost died out a couple and times. And it wasn't it's big that day. It was not no, like it, maybe four feet. Well, it's like it's like Chopo going the other way mm. in front of a cliff. Yeah. In front of a point, rocks. Yeah. yeah you, 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 from the outside, from the land, looks really good. So by Right, let's go. Like everybody hears about it, no one. Yeah. And then. I gotta bleep again. Yeah, I know. Sorry. <laughs> I, 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 Please, I pal- yeah. Yeah, I pal- out and and. Uh, but you everybody better go in. knows about Hanalei, yeah. but you know, yeah. even even out there, it's like you, you there's. It, it takes care of itself when it's gnarly. No, it's about, so it ain't heavy. crowded out yeah. there. Yeah, right. There ain't numerous right. guys out there getting yeah. nerves. When it's you know that wave is, like giant back door, you know with with a with like 10 sections you know no i yeah yeah anyways uh, Hanale, <laughs> until i moved to maui it blew me. Hanale was i'm a goofy footer too so Hanale to me was one of the best right and then i moved to maui and i go oh my god yeah some it? of the best way in my life and well, i i, I got cloud breaks well, really good but Hanale to well, me what was it like is epic. too is like my whole theory growing up was if there's a 20 foot swell, I'm surfing 20 feet. I'm not surfing eight feet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's just that's how I grew, that's how I grew up. So <laughs> there's a lot of waves that are good when the swell's 20 feet, but they're six to eight. Yeah. So I they're like Honolulu. I would if in my prime, I would probably never even surf there. I'd be out of Jaws. Jaws. Yeah. Yeah. If I was from Maui local, yeah, 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 I would I wouldn't even be there. Right. I'd be at the big one. Yeah. So I, I just felt weird. I didn't feel like. I was a real big wave surfer if there was a 20 foot swell and I was surfing 10 foot somewhere. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, I guarantee. Just feel yeah. better if I was surfing wherever it's 20 feet. Okay, I'm done. That's all, <laughs> that's all I want to know. Well, but yeah, please bleep that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you, you know, it, it, that spot takes care of itself. It, yeah, it people does. have come there and they. Uh, Good luck. Yeah. They yeah. can't even surf the wave. <laughs> you won't make it to the line. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, I, um, you know, I want to thank you. Thank you for coming here, and thank you for sharing, and thank you for opening up and sharing with us uh, your story. I know that you are a family man. You love your uh, new grandson, and uh, Dewey and I um, made a little gift. Um, This is from us to you. You have two animal books and a shirt with sharks. It's a (laughs) button-down shirt. May I have your grandson's name, please? Grandpa. Yeah, it's Risen is his first name. Risen. Risen. Ooh. And then his middle name is Kala. And Ooh. then Risen. Yeah. And then Oh, that's beautiful. And here is another little gift oh, that we you guys made are for awesome, you. Man. What? <laughs> we have a little newborn <laughs> the Aloha Hour. No way. Because we're sure that one day he's gonna, gonna go be on see the him show. right now. No, for real. See him right and, now. And, and I have Kala. another, and I have a, a yeah. more gifts for you outside from okay. my uh, buddy uh, Dustin Lamb. Thank you so much for always taking care of us. That was such a sick idea. He gave you, uh, he gave us three sets for your for the baby. Uh, it's a body glove suits. It's so cool. Yeah, you, you guys, it, it was a hard birth too. Um, anybody listen to this? I don't recommend home birth. Yeah, my daughter, she wanted to do a home birth, and and and. It's her prerogative. She's an adult. But yeah. I, anybody out there that hears this that is considering a home birth, I honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I wouldn't do it. Because if anything happens, if you're 30 miles away from the hospital and something happens, you're 30 miles away, away from, from the, the hospital, hospital. Right? If you're at the hospital something happens, you're at the hospital. You yeah. have doctors, nurses. Yeah. So um, he, he was, uh, we had some really good people there. His grandma, my, my daughter's uh, grandmother is a nurse. We had a good midwife, but... He was almost 10 pounds and he got stuck in the birth canal. Oh they, had to, my they had to pull him gosh. out and broke his arm. So oh. his arm is still healing, um, but he couldn't breathe when he came out because of all that trauma coming. It, he was really big. Um, so they got him on oxygen, though. He was he was blue. They had to fly him over to Oahu because they were on Kauai. Um, he was in Kapiolani. And, uh, you know, we're, it was, we were really worried for him. But, you know, he, 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 a week mm-hmm. later, he got let out of the hospital. He's doing really good right now. He's getting really healthy. Um, I'm trying to get them to stay here through the new year just to make sure he's good, the arm's good. Yeah. Um, and the airport. I don't really want him to go to the airport too soon in his life. You know, the yeah. airport's crazy right now. Well, if you need any help for accommodation, you know who to talk to. Okay. I appreciate it, you guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. Anything Absolutely. else you guys want to ask me? Or are we... Are we 
I think uh, you know we wow. we gotta stick to the aloha hour. We oh, already it's an hour. It's already an hour. We are already no, no. over an hour. We already wow. at about a hundred uh, minutes. Two hours, five fifty-three, six o'clock. You're kidding already. me? I don't yeah, know yeah. how that went by yeah, that fast, you guys. But yeah, I feel like I mess uh, left a lot out. But yeah, I just you gotta come back. Huh? I, just, Cause, I, cause just, uh, I think you gotta come back. There's I really, so much beautiful story I, you shared. You today. know what? I just I hope the kids all learn from what I said and and just you know take care of yourself and be good to yourself and. Uh, we are our own worst enemy. Yep. Like those kids, like myself. Like we, are, we, you know, a lot of us have talent, we have skill, but if you hold it back or you do shit to shut it down, you know, it's, you're just gonna suffer. Yeah. So but I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for these gifts. Thank no. you for coming in. I still can't believe I'm a grandfather. <laughs> 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 this is awesome. Well, we're in the Lua and I was going, I, I'm so this jealous. I can't awesome, wait guys. to become Thank a grandfather you. and here you are. That's You're sick, so yeah. lucky, man. Yeah, look at that, you guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 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 we got to get one from the Hui now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. You guys appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, man. Thank you, John. Absolutely. Thank you. Oh, thank you very my much. Pleasure. Um, to all the audience, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, it's been a pleasure with you. Oh. Thank you very much, Dewey. Uh, Brett, thank you very much. Kala. <laughs> Appreciate it, you guys. Thank you very much. Wait, wait, thank before you. we go, can you mention your, 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 your shark boat program and your. Um, sh um, whale boats yeah, yeah, for yeah, all yeah. those out there so, who wants to be it's Hala Eva Shark Tours um, we're right in Hala Eva and we, we're go, we go out every day um, we have to cancel a lot because of bad weather so we're, we'll go every day even holidays okay. at least in the morning um, that's Hala Eva Shark Tours Hala Eva Shark Tours dot com and then my my um I gotta abbreviate these websites Nanikai Ocean Adventures dot com is my whale watching uh, we can, do a can you full, say it one more time slower yeah. because a lot of people are not going to. Yeah, be Nani it. Kai Ocean Adventures, okay. N A N I K A I uh, Ocean Adventures dot com. Uh, I'm definitely going to abbreviate them so you, they still go to the same website. So in the future, but uh, uh, I do a full coastal tour, all the surf breaks, go over how the waves were formed, the Ahupua'a system, the way the Hawaiians lived, the way they they mm. they divided their land. Mm. Um, where all the movies were filmed, yeah. uh, we covered just about everything. Um, go over safety, water safety, what these people should. Always, people call me from the mainland. I say you got to come on my whale watching trip. The first two days you get here, so then you'll know a lot about the island, right. and where you should go and what you shouldn't do. It's like history yeah. of Aine. Yeah, it really is, and it, it, it's like a reconnaissance too. Like you go and learn the first two days about everything to see and do and then you can go out and have a better week and that's how i approach it like I, I like i said in the beginning i want them to have the best week if they're here for a week if they're here for two weeks i want them to have the best two weeks yeah i'm always available for my people to call me and but locals too we got local prices too yeah and definitely want to um get locals out a lot of locals come out and they they're like wow i didn't know that i didn't know this what yeah yeah, yeah, yeah me included yeah, i was yeah. blown yeah, away yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. It's a sick activity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, before we're going to let you go, we have five what would you rather questions. We can't let you leave before we read to you the five what would you rather questions. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess. <laughs> All right. What would you rather, Kal Alexander, go bold for a year or dye your hair bright pink for a month? Um, I would do the hair for pink for a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kal Alexander, pink hair. Yeah, that's pink, what's up. Pink is one of my favorite colors <laughs> for sure. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. What would you rather? Tattoo, kick me on your back or hug me on your chest? Definitely hug me on my chest. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What would you rather? Play Rick Kane from the movie North Shore or Johnny Utah from Point Break? Johnny Utah. Utah. Yeah. Johnny Utah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What would you rather? I don't know. I, you know what? Hang on. <laughs> Nia Peoples is hot. Oh, oh my God. God. I might have to be Rick Kane, man. I don't know. I don't know. You're She's right. She's smoking hot. Yeah, I she have is. to go Rick Kane. Oh, yeah. I take that yeah. back. Rick Kane. <laughs> oh, that, that's epic. What would you rather? Have a shark bite off your nose or Mike Tyson bite off your ear? Mike Tyson bite off my ear. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Hell yeah. Yeah. Because at least I would still have a nose. <laughs> <laughs> and a great story to tell about Mike. <laughs> Conversation. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's a tough one. What would you rather? Wear a captain hat every time you're on your boat or a chef hat? Every time you go out for captain dinner. Captain boat, easy. Yeah! yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. 
Kala Alexander, thank you very much. The Aloha Hour. Thank you. We love you guys. Thank you. Aloha, you guys. Chew.